All right. Hi, everyone. Well, that's if anyone's on watching. Good morning. If you are tuning in, please let me know where you are. Um, today's going to be a little bit of fun. We are going to photograph the backdrop that I hand painted yesterday during yesterday's live. So if you missed that, that's still going to stay in the group. All of our lives are staying right here in the group so you can come back re-watch. And you know, they, some do go for a little bit longer than others so you can fast forward through all those, those sort of boring, tedious bits. But um, yeah, we had a great day yesterday, lots of fun. I can tell you I'm a little physically sore. My back and my shoulder got a nice workout yesterday. Uh, probably emphasised my need to do a little bit more exercise on a regular basis. But <laughs> it's something I'm going to be working on um, while we do have some of this quiet downtime. But yeah, I'm excited because today I thought what a great way to kind of show you how I would use the backdrop that I painted yesterday. I'm going to talk about styling and all the different things that I would use during a setup like this. I'm going to talk a little bit about lighting a prop setup like this. I'm going to talk about my camera angles. Garrett is working very, very um, hard over here trying to get my tether sorted out for my camera so you'll be able to see all of the photos that I take today. If not, I'll be able to show you the back of my camera, which is not a big deal, but um, if we thought it'd be great if we could actually tether this. So he's just getting that sorted out there with the program that we use to be able to broadcast this live to you using multiple different cameras. But yeah, while he's doing that, I thought that I would, um, oh, hi, we've got someone from Denmark. Good morning. Well, good evening over there. But yeah, this is so great that you guys are tuning in. I want to be able to give you as much as I possibly can so that you can, um, you know, uh, get a little bit more creative and inspired about what you can create and do during this time while we are, um, you know, potentially on lockdown. I know the UK went into lockdown and you know we're, we've taken some pretty strict measures here in Australia as well at the moment and other countries around the world are also going through you know some of these really really tough times that are going to to force us to start living differently um, at the moment that's for sure so anyway if I can do anything to help in, in the meantime, I will. Uh, Garrett and I are going to keep coming into the studio. Uh, we work out of our studio, so we literally, you know, go from our home to here, and that's pretty much it. And uh, as long as we're allowed to keep doing that, we will, so we can keep broadcasting and bringing you guys more and more content. Now, if you haven't seen yesterday's email, please check your junk email folder. Michelle sent out um, a brilliant email with a PDF attached to it. I did also share it here in the group, but that interactive PDF that she has created is filled with amazing links for free content, um, other places and sources of inspiration. It is an amazing PDF. Uh, she's very, very talented at putting things like that together. So we're constantly brainstorming ways that we can bring you guys more information, more content to stay positive, stay focused so we can get through this. And once we do get through it, which I know we will because of, you know, just, you know, the supportive community that we are, um, we are going to struggle. But again, we will get through this. I know that we're going to hit the ground running when we can start um, photographing our clients again safely. Alrighty, so let me talk. And you, and you know what? If you guys have got some questions, pop them into the comments, please. I can't see who it is. It says Facebook user. Hey, Lizzie. I just saw that comment come up. Uh, I bet it's late there. I'm hoping that the homeschooling is going well. Yeah, pop your name in with your comments so I can see it on the TV screen. It is just over here to my left. So I'm going to keep an eye on those. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what I choose when it comes to styling different setups. And what inspired me to do this today was the critique that we had the other day, the image critique on Friday. You can go back and re-watch it if you missed it. But I talked a lot about um, you know, some different styling aspects. So I thought I'd share with you when I'm creating a different setup, what I look for when it comes to styling. Because you know, sometimes, I mean, I'm probably I suppose a less is more type of person. I'm just trying to get rid of a knot here in this headband. Um, but when it comes to creating a beautiful setup, you know, I am one of those people who likes to start big and then I remove things that don't add to the composition of that particular setup. So I've got my beautiful bowl, I've got my gorgeous hand painted backdrop, which um, you probably can't see from there, but when you look at this up close, the, the very subtle textures and shifts in tone from 
the warmer to cooler brown tones and that soft texture is exactly what I was going for. Um, it means that if I want to add more texture later on I can with my textures but it's also um, not going to be something that I need to spend you know hours removing lots of different textures that are too busy or distracting in the image. So that's where you know I suppose that less is more comes into it. Um, but yeah, what I normally do when I sit down, I talk to my clients at the beginning of the session, we discuss all of the different um, colours and tones that we're going to create. They usually tell me if they've seen something, I, I'll, I'll ask. If, if they've seen something of mine that they like, that they'd like to create from, from that session. So it is up to us to communicate with them, to ask the right questions, to get the information we need to create beautiful photos you know they're going to love because it will always reflect the final sale. If you haven't asked the right questions, if you haven't um, you know, listened to what it is that they're saying, and you just go ahead and you create whatever it is that you want, they're going to be very polite. They're gonna sit back and they're not going to say anything. So always make sure you ask and you, you talk to them. I, I personally love to ask what sort of colours and tones do they have in their home? Are there any particular colours they have as feature walls? Do they have light coloured furniture, dark coloured furniture? I get all of that information so that I can start getting in my head some ideas about what we're going to create. Alrighty, so um, with this particular setup, like I said, I've got my beautiful bowl. I'm going to use, to show you, we did this in our DIY hack video the other day, just a, a tube filled with polystyrene balls, which is going to help me fill my bowl. And then I've got my sock filled with rice that I'm going to use as an extra support. I've got my baby today. You can get to see her. I'll sit her up there. Um, I am going to use continuous light today so that I can show you the placement of that light, that soft box, and, um, and how I capture it and how I light this to draw your eye into the main subject. I've got a few other bits and pieces here. I've got a little hat, so, you know, my, my doll is a girl, but we can pretend whether she's a boy or a girl, and I'll show you what I would do for it for the different boy-girl setups using these colours. And then I've got a wrap, a nice long stretchy wrap. I've got some different textured wool that I've purchased from different places. This is just a wool batting, so it's a wool sheet. Um, and you can see it's just been filtered, it's been cut, nothing special, but it does do a great job of covering any of the different supports that you do use inside your props. I've also got some sort of thinner wool batting, and I purchased this from a wool shop. Um, so do, do your research online, type in wool batting, things like that, but that's very fine, but it just means that I can tear off the edges to kind of give it that softer look as well. So I'll, t I'll cover that um, base one there but it does get it is quite fragile and then I've just got some very freshly shorn wool now this is unwashed um, fleece now it has got a lot of lanolin on it that I would not put a newborn baby directly on that purely because it hasn't been washed it hasn't been treated um, it's still got a few little bits and pieces in it but if I was to shoot a digital background or something like that and I want to use the different textures um, in this and I love the colours and tones of it, um, then I would use this for sure. But I would be very careful when putting a baby on top of that. I would make sure obviously that I'd gone through and checked the wool and then I'd make sure the baby was nice and wrapped um, securely and isn't going to come into contact with it. So I've got all my different textures that I'm going to add together. Like I said, I've got some little flowers over here, but I wanted to talk about all of these sort of different little things that I would use to help style a setup like this. If I was going to use some flowers around the edge of the bowl, um, at the base of the bowl, and these are just dried flowers that I keep. I tend to keep everything that I I've ever been given, or if I, I see something that's you know, um, pretty in the shops. These are just a wildflower that have just dried. So I kind of like the texture of them. And if I was to use something like this, um, you know, just to add like a little bit of subtle detail, I'm going to start kind of building it. I'll have a look through my camera to see whether or not, 
you know, it's adding to the composition or if it is um, actually going to be distracting. Now using something like this, I'm always going to consider as well where I position it and where my camera angle is going to be because that's going to be a combination of how I pose and position the baby inside the prop, where I'm physically standing and holding my camera as to what I can see and what I can't see. Because if you sit down here in a position that I'm in and you start placing you know, all of these beautiful flowers and you can see them and they look good from here, when I stand up with my camera, you know, I can only see a very small amount of those flowers kind of sticking out. So you do have to be careful when you are spending a lot of your time throughout a session styling something like this, that you know, that, that time is going to good use. Um, you're not wasting time doing things like this and then you know they don't quite work out in shot so it's going to be a combination of you know that camera angle and the way that you position the baby to get them absolutely perfect so if the baby was being fed right now it'd be a great way to to kind of um, come in and introduce you know a few little things like this to create some unique setups obviously these are molting so i'm going to have to kind of um, get the um, the little excess ones that are falling off out of the way. But yeah, I'm just going to kind of come around the outside of the prop here with a few of these. You guys got any questions? Pop them into the comments there. What is this? Day one homeschooling. <laughs> Successful things. We've got someone from LA watching. Hi everyone. You know, I know you're, you guys are all going to be going through some tough times. We all are at the moment. And uh, that's why I want to keep the sort of morale nice and high here in the group so we can support each other. I'm going to come back tomorrow. We're going to do some editing with this same, um, same sort of prop and backdrop. And we can have a little bit of fun with this. Any questions there, Garrett? Nothing coming through just yet. Is Vancouver when the flight back to Oz? Who is that? That is Pam J M. Oh. Well, fingers crossed your flight goes smoothly and they get you out of there. Deborah says you're wearing makeup. Who did? Yeah. yeah, I do most days. I try. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I was just actually looking at, uh, at my makeup levels this morning thinking, I hope these last me with all these lives because I only put makeup on for you guys. Oh, you're so true. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So yeah, I'm just kind of creating a bit of a circular feature here coming around, if you guys can see there. And I'm looking from above where I'm going to be shooting this. I'm kind of breaking it off as I come around. So we'll focus on a bit of a girly setup at the moment. So I love props like this because I can shoot them from above or from, you know, the side. I can put a baby upright in a prop like this. I am making an absolute mess with these flowers, but it is going to look very pretty once I'm finished. Uh, Deborah says, I don't wear makeup when I shoot babies. Ah, that's a good comment. So I tend not to put my face anywhere near babies when I am working with them. I know it can be hard, but yeah, a lot of babies can have skin allergies and things like that, and or be sensitive to different sort of foundations and moisturizers and things like that. I remember my children had quite bad allergies to particular sunscreens growing up, not so bad now. But yes, when you are wearing makeup and things like that, do take into consideration that it could irritate the baby's skin. It could be very rich if your face does come into contact with them. But I'm one of those people, I keep the baby down nice and low. I try not to keep my, put my face anywhere near them. I'm 
as I kind of come around, I'm sort of creating this, this little uh, nesty look here around the outside and it just adds that little bit of extra detail. I really didn't have much of a clue what I was going to do to start with when I first walked in here this morning. So sometimes it's nice just to kind of play, but like I said, you do have to be careful throughout a session that you're not wasting time. If you've got a baby that's sound asleep, you wouldn't be doing this. You'd be photographing that baby. This would be something that you could potentially do afterwards to make the most of the time that you've got with that sleepy baby. All right, we're nearly all the way around here. So my plan to start with is to shoot this from above. I'm sort of looking at the, the positioning of it. A little bit of extra here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'll remove some of these flowers and I'll shoot it backlit so that I can get that variety that I'm looking for. And that's the thing, whenever we do do a setup, if you're going to put a little bit more extra time into it, and when a baby's feeding, it's the perfect time to sort of set something like this up. But you've got to be very organized with your time in the studio. Alrighty. Sorry, I shouldn't have picked her up like that. That was a bit... <laughs> I didn't even think. <laughs> Probably didn't look so great on camera picking a doll up by its head, but uh, yeah, she, uh, she is not real, people. <laughs> All right, I think that looks pretty good. Can you see some of that with that other, other camera yeah, from so above? Yeah, so I've got both views up there, so you can see um, both cameras that we're working with today, which looks nice. Fantastic. Um, uh, update on the tethering for you. I've, I've given Lightroom the link and we're downloading uh, Canon Utility. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well that's great. Let's see how we go. Okay, so I'm ready to start sort of filling and lining the prop there. I've got all of those pretty flowers exactly where I want them, so they look great. So I'll just get some of these excess little leaves away here. So I don't have to spend too much time in post removing those. A little hair dryer would be perfect right about now. Okay, so like I said, when I'm thinking about where I'm going to position and shoot that baby from in terms of that camera angle, um, I've got my light set up here and you can see the height difference. What I might do before we even start wrapping and, and getting our baby ready is have a look at the height of this particular light. And you'll be able to pay particular attention to some of the shadows that are down here on the floor. Are they easy to see there, Garrett? What have we got here? So on this side, keep an eye on these sort of shadows over here. See my spotty socks? <laughs> so at the moment, my light is at 100%. Now, if I turn my light directly towards the prop, you can see how much brighter that area becomes. So if I turn that light slightly away, you can see it start to soften and you can start to see a little bit more detail in the, the white sort of um, material that's in the center there. So if I point it directly at the prop, you're going to get the full intensity of light coming out of the center of that light. What I wanted to show you to start with is, if I just lower the light, all right, what I am doing here is lighting now the side of my prop and I'm creating more sort of shadows through the center here. So let's pop our baby in. Let's have a look here at some of these shadows here while we talk about the light. 
Alrighty, so at the moment you can see I've got a lot of light coming in and hitting the side of her right here. And then I've got some shadows over here. So to my eye, I can physically see, is it a little overblown there? Or is it okay? No, it's all right. Um, so I'm just making sure you can see exactly what I can see. So now if I bring that light, and just excuse me for a moment because I've got a couple of sandbags on here. It can be hard. If I bring that light really close, I'm going to make that light even brighter and even more intense and make those shadows even harsher on the other side of the baby. Um, obviously the shadows are going to be shorter because the light is closer, but the further obviously away, the softer that light becomes. And when we're working with babies, we do want beautiful soft light. But what I want is to make sure that I've got a beautiful even fall off of light across my baby. I don't have bright highlights down here on one side and then dark shadows over here on the other side. Yes, I can bring in a reflector and I can start to fill them, but I'm still going to have, you know, a really contrasty light there. So what I want to do to create that beautiful soft light is I'm going to move my light stand just back a little bit and I'm going to lift it up higher and I always want to have my light more elevated and pointing on an angle down because I don't want to light the side of my prop, I want to light the baby that's in the prop. So elevating that light has now softened the light that's hitting the floor and what I'm going to do is again the full intensity of lights coming down on that prop. Now just watch the prop and how the light changes as I pull that light box up. Now I'm lighting the baby and not the ground. So the ground is being lit. Now the baby's being lit. So what I'm using now is that beautiful soft light that's falling from the edge of my soft box here and it's spilling down across my baby. The light is softer. My background is lit more evenly because the light is higher, so it's spreading across, meaning my shadows are shorter on this side. Even to when I'm shooting from above like this, I do love shadows, but what I can do is still come in and fill some of the shadows on the ground down there where the flowers are to light them if they are too dark. So it's all about having a look at the direction of that light, the height and the placement of it, and where you can use, I suppose, the light that's coming off the edge, that softer light that's spilling down here and it's coming down across the baby as opposed to coming down and just lighting the entire setup. That's where we sort of tend to create very flat light, very contrasty light. We end up with problems like overexposing highlights and things like that. So always have a look at your light source, position that light in a way that um, you know, directs it exactly where you want it, which in this instance is across the baby. Does that make sense? What is the big prop underneath the baby? That big prop is a giant tube stocking filled with polystyrene balls so I can mould it and it's not too full um, but it's nice and soft. Alrighty, so now let's go in. Now we've got our lights that have positioned exactly where we want it. Let's have a look at how we're going to style this. Now that I've made a mess with these flowers. Okay, now there was another question there above. Someone has said, please don't use something raw. I uh, saw, but it disappeared. The, um, the raw flakes, uh, because the lanolin... Yes, so that's what I was saying before. You don't want to put a baby directly on that. That's why I'm going to use it with my fake baby. And if I'm doing a digital background for myself to use in the future, um, then it's going to be perfect. All right, so let's just pop her up there for a moment. Okay, so when I'm using a round prop and I want to make sure that I've got the baby in the center of the prop, I have to create that well that's going to support the baby around the outside to keep it in that nice ball-like shape. When you're using a round prop, 
um, you really want to try and make the baby look as round as possible, if that makes sense. So the way that you wrap the baby, you don't want them looking like, you know, a, a sort of like a long sort of straight line cutting through a round shape. You want to follow the lines of the prop, um, which is something that I'm always, always looking for. Now, I do have um, this wool fabric here. So depending on the size of the baby when I'm using something like that, this could work really well just to line it. So this is nice and soft and you can pop it in around that tubing to cover it. And I'm just keeping my hand there in the middle to keep it nice and separated. But I ultimately, the idea here is setting it up in a way so that I can get that baby perfectly positioned in the center of this prop. Um, I mentioned the other day when we were doing, I think it was, I think it was the live DIY, I'm not quite sure. I mentioned that when you, or no, it was actually our um, critique. When you're putting a baby in something like this, you don't want to put them in in a way so that they are sort of flat. You want to get the lower body down lower and the upper body up higher so that when you are shooting from above, the head is always going to be closest to that camera. I've got the live view yep. with live view on here. Okay, that can work. Um, not the finished shot though. That's so all right. Can, They'll be able to see what I'm looking at. We can flick through them um, on the computer. Afterwards? Once, once Perfect. We're, once we're done. So Garrett's using his technical skills there so that I can show you exactly what I'm looking for through my camera. You guys enjoying this? Can't believe it, people are learning from Kelly. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about, sharing information, guys. And uh, there's nothing I love more. Okay, so I do want to be able to create, obviously, some support here underneath the little baby's head. So little pillows and things like that. But to get the baby in the center of a round prop, you want to line the middle of the back or the belly button up with the middle of the bowl. So the bum is going to come further towards the edge and then the back will be in the centre there. So that's why I'm sort of separating some of those beans there for where the little bottom is going to go down and I'm kind of pushing them around to create that height that's going to come up there underneath the head. I have got another sock here filled with rice that I also made during my DIY live the other day. You can go back to the videos or the announcements tab to find all of those and we'll use that if we need to. Um, so with this, the texture of that is a little busy and I'm looking at the textures here and the beautiful flowers underneath and whilst there's some creamy sort of tones and some greens in there, I've still sort of kept it really earthy. So I'm not going to use this to start with. We'll push that off to the side. I have got a little hat here, but what I'm going to do is start off with a headband because we've got some flowers, so we'll do it girly. But what I did want to show you was some of the different headbands that I've got in these tones as to which one I might choose to use. All right, because when we are choosing headbands, we don't want to make it too busy, but we want it to go with the overall sort of theme and color tones. So if I have a little look at this, the flowers in the, in the plant are a very soft, creamy pink. There are some pink tones in there. So something like that is probably going to be too pink because there's probably more cream tones than there are pink. So even though that worked, I wouldn't use this one. I want to show you why. This one here, very cute. Overall goes with the different color tones that we're going to be using, the different wrap but too big, too busy, and doesn't go with the flowers down below. So this is my process of picking the right headband for this particular setup. I wouldn't obviously get it all out and do this, but I just wanted to show you what would work in my opinion and what wouldn't. I guess this is kind of the process that you mentally go, go through. through anyway. Yeah. yeah, and you know what, if you had this, and you were a little crafty, you had a hot glue gun, you could pull a bit off and stick it to a headband to make your own matching headband, which would be really, really sweet if that was the type of setup that you were going for. Obviously knowing that that's what your clients wanted. Um, but while you're, you know, you're sort of having some downtime, this is the perfect opportunity for you to get into your studio and start doing things like this. You know, we're allowed to go out on a needs basis, so a necessity is to go to the supermarket to buy your groceries. 
I was in my supermarket yesterday, they still have flowers. So I had a look at the, um, the sort of more native organic flowers as to, to which ones I could have a look at and particularly dry just to have in the studio for later on. So I am always looking at different options like that. So I'm looking at this one, it's got little green leaves um, and it's got some really pretty tones that are going to go well here and it's girly and it's delicate but again still a little too different. It could work but in my opinion probably a bit too busy and the same with this one here. But I do love all of these sort of natural warm tones. Again we've got a little pink flower with a little green um, leaf so I'm starting to get towards what I would pick. The um, other two that I've got here and I always um, you know want to go with something that's not going to overpower the baby. And then I've got another little um, sort of brown one here that's going to go well with my my brown tones and my wrap but again I don't have a lot of those brown tones in those green sort of flowers down below but they do uh, they are in the backdrop. So that could potentially work. But then I've got something really sort of simple and delicate like this, which is just a little bit of soft wool. We're going to use wool. We've got some creamy tones down there. And we've got just a simple little pearl. So for me, it would be out of both of those. And if I'm going for something that's really delicate, like that flower, um, I'm going to go with the little pearl. Alrighty, so we'll go with the little pearl because I think that that's going to work really well with that flower and we're not introducing something that is different to what's already there. This is quite similar so it could work but I think I'm going to go with this just from a personal preference. But this is where I'd be sitting here and I'd be doing a setup for my clients and I'd kind of go, do you know, I think both of these would work really well. Do you have a preference? And I would ask them and then they're choosing it. They could then have the ability, like I'm giving them the option to kind of say, no, I don't really like them. Or they can have a choice. So when I get them involved in the process, um, they feel a part of the experience, which is exactly what I'm going for. Um, those headbands, are they like just a plain sort of string? Yeah, that's this one here. These ones here are all sort of like your hessian woven um, string, brown string. Um, if you are looking for strings and things like that to make your own headbands, just make sure it's nice and soft. You can treat skin, the, sorry, you can treat skin. You can treat the string um, by soaking it and, and things like that. But um, yeah, just make sure that whatever you are putting on a baby, it's not scratchy, it's not going to irritate the baby and it's been softened. Um, Kelly, I just bought the 24 to 70. I had a 35 and asked you what you suggested. I tested it out tonight and now I'm kicking myself that I did not own it sooner. Thank you so oh, much. Ah, fantastic. That is so good to hear. I do love my 24 to 70 and it makes such a difference. All right, so we've got our, our little um, support in here exactly where we want it. And this is where I'm going to use this really soft, this has been treated, um, sort of wool, wool batting here. And I'm just going to kind of come around the edge here. to create that nice sort of soft look there. And the way I position and place it. We've got any more questions guys? Fire away, that's what we're here for. Um, the baby. <laughs> so I had this particular baby here made especially for me. Uh, she did cost me a lot of money. We were up around the sort of I think it was around the 1800 euros uh, when I had her made. The company makes them specifically for movies and things like that. So it was a large investment for training purposes. I am still working on releasing my own silicon doll that will not cost that much. <laughs> um, but at the moment we're just going through some trademarking um, processes to make sure that um, you know, we, we look after our investment as a business. All right. 
right, so I'm just making this all nice and soft around the edge, not too concerned about the inside there because you won't see it, but you can see that sort of beautiful torn off edge there. And I still want to see the wooden bowl. But I think I bought this from this wool supplier, gosh, it would be years ago now, and I still keep reinventing it and using it for different things. I love that really soft edge that it has. Okay, so we've got that nice. Now when you are filling a prop like this, you know, depending on the size of the baby is going to depend on obviously how full you make it. Let's get my excesses out of the way. All right, so now when I look at wrapping my baby, I want to make sure that I, like I said before, that I follow that circular shape and I try to keep her as round as I possibly can. So there's a couple of different ways I can wrap and depending on, I suppose, the baby at the time, if the baby is unsettled, I'm probably going to wrap them a little more securely with their arms and legs wrapped in. If they're nice and sleepy, then I'm probably going to, to wrap um, that baby, you know, with more of their arms and legs visible. So let's just pretend we have a really nice, settled, calm baby. And I'm going to start with my wrap in the middle. Now this is about probably one and a half to two metres long in length. This wrap, it is a nice long one. Actually, let's do a different type. Let's go around here so we can see the arms and legs. Um, do you sanitise your walls? my wools, um, I sanitise everything that the baby comes into contact with. So all of these have all been treated. So I usually have the baby not touch them at all um, in terms of their little arms and legs. But yes, if you are sort of buying some wool, if the baby is going to come into contact with it, you need to make sure that you're obviously cleaning it at all times. But the thing with this stuff is, is that it is treated, it is very soft, but there are some walls out there that are a little bit more sort of scratchy um, and, and, um, and so on. So you just want to make sure that, you know, it has been treated and there are people out there like Coochie Koo who sell beautiful woolen products. She actually raises all of her own sheep to make her products and they're absolutely gorgeous, stunning, and they're super, super soft. So yeah, whenever you are thinking about putting a baby into anything, just make sure that it is not going to irritate that baby. Okay, so to start with, I'm just going to come across the tummy. This is where if, if our little baby here was wearing a nappy or a diaper, um, we'd be able to cover that. And I do tend to use, leave those on. All right, so I've just gone around once and I'm going to come over again just to make that, anchor that down a little better. and come up around the shoulders here. But yeah, I use for all of my wraps and my hats and all of that, whenever I'm cleaning them, um, after a session, I use a sensitive wool wash and I hand wash them just in my laundry tub and I have like a little mini clothesline in my, my laundry so I can hang them all up to dry there. So they keep their shape and, and so forth. I know some poor people have put their things in the, in the dry, dryer and they have shrunk and <laughs> it hasn't been so great. All right, so to keep her nice and round, there's a couple of different ways that you could put a baby in a prop like this. You could put them in on their side to create that round shape like that. Um, or you could put them in flat on their back and have their little arms positioned and then sort of tilt their head. But the idea is to get their little bottom legs up so you can create that curly shape. And it's the same process. If you're working on your posing bag or if you're working in a prop, you need to create the support underneath them as to how you want them positioned. So you've got to think about um, you know, how you want them to lie. All right, how many people we got on watching? Yeah, Holy smokes. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so let's go with putting her in on her back here because what I want to do is, is go for a backlit shot as well when we've got this all set up. So just holding those legs in place. I've got my thumb down in underneath that bottom. I've tucked that leg in there, so I've got those feet sitting nice and flat, and I'm going to come around the outside here. 
Any questions? Um, gearing up to start infant photography and to photograph adults, how do you come up with creative ways to keep the look fresh and beautiful? What's your inspiration? You know, doing things like this, painting new backdrops like I did the other day, just coming in and to my studio or if you don't have one, you know, wherever you store all your, your pieces, if you go to client homes, just sort of pull them all out and start looking at different ways you could put the different combinations of textures and colours together. Ultimately, you basically want to make sure that whatever you do put together, it complements the baby, it circles, it frames, it... Um, contributes to the composition and it doesn't distract or take away from the baby. The baby should always be that that main focal point of every single setup that you do. But yeah, I, I love to find inspiration from different places. Um, I don't look at other photographers for inspiration. I tend to look more at sort of illustrations and graphics and um, I love going to art galleries. Michelle included in that interactive PDF a link to a virtual tour of a museum. Highly recommend you do that when you have, you know, some quiet time, a glass of wine or a cup of coffee, depending on the time of day. And, uh, and do that because you learn so much from looking at art history and how you can incorporate, you know, different colours, tones and textures, um, different compositions. Okay, so you can see I've created that nice ball shape. I've come around the outside quite a few times there as much as I can. We'll tuck that down in underneath and we've got those little hands where we want them. And then what I'm going to do is position the face in, inside the prop. So now when I'm looking at the direction of that light and it's coming obviously from here, I always want to have the baby's head closest to the light source. The brightest part of the image should be where you want to draw your viewer's attention. So the way that I position her in here is going to depend on the direction of that light. So I always want the light to fall directly from across the top of the face into the cheek. So this is where I wouldn't have her turned this way because now the light is coming straight up her nose and creating some unwanted shadows. So I turn the chin away from the light source and get those little hands up in there. And we'll pop her in. Actually, let's pop her headband on. Where is it? There. I forgot. I'm in such need of redoing the way that I store all of my headbands. So I'm actually going to come up with a couple of ways and share those with you guys here in the group as well when I get that organised. I think that might be later on, maybe next week. And we've got a bit of time. But when you are putting a headband on a baby, like she doesn't have any hair, so it's a bit hard to kind of, you know, visually see what I'm referring to here. But if you have a look at her face um, and, and the oval face here, if I have a headband come down through the forehead, I'm cutting through that oval shape. So it's almost intersecting the shape of the head and the face. What you want to do is frame the head and the face. So when we bring that headband up to the top of the head and we bring it down, now it's framing her face and her little head. So that's why we position headbands up in the hairline as opposed to on the forehead. And that way they're less distracting, but they're now complementing the shape of the head and the face by framing it. Okay. I mean, she's being such a good baby here. Oh, she's not going to keep that hand in there, but that's all right. The only downside. Okay, so I've got her in here. Now the light is coming straight down on top of her head. So what I want to do is have a look at the direction. I could move the light, but I can also just move that bowl into where I get that light exactly where I want it. And I'm watching that little shadow fall across her face there. So that's exactly where it needs to be. And then if we think about how you've got them positioned, I've got her nice and centered in the bowl. 
Um, I could bring her little head up here. I'm just going to sort of pull this wool in a little bit around to kind of cover some of those shadows. And what you could do is even tear off some smaller pieces that we had before and sort of place them around the edge here to blend in a little better. And that just eliminates some more of those, those darker shadows where the body goes down. Any chance you'll be showing the prop that you used in the platinum image from WPBI in the annual this year? Yes, absolutely. I will, um, I'll talk you through that, that particular image in one of my lives, we'll bring it in. I'm hoping actually, the little baby that was in that, I'm really hoping to be able to get her back into the studio one day soon. I know it's gonna be a bit tricky, but um, you know, she started sitting and I really wanted to get a photo of her in it sitting as well, which I think that would be beautiful. All right. I'll be changing batteries in a mic shortly. In mine? Okay. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. All right, so now when we look at the position of her little head, I kind of want to curl it up a little bit more. When we put our supports at the back of the baby's head, if we put the support down low, it's gonna lift the chin up. If we put the support at the back of the top of the head, it's gonna bring the chin forward. Um, so for me, I'm always looking for different little things that I can place underneath the baby's head to give it some support. I've got some little homemade pillows my mum made for me. Um, and they're nice and squishy and nice and soft. So I want to get those hands and that head in place first. Tilting that little chin to the side. And then that way I know exactly where I need to put that support, which is just underneath there. Um, how do you keep your clients and potential clients engaged on social media platforms during times like these? I love the idea of doing something creative but my audience might lose faith in my work once they see my disasters online. <laughs> oh, don't show them your disasters. <laughs> Do you know, um, don't ever be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, share what it is that you're creating. I, you know, I've made a lot of things over the years that haven't worked, but sometimes you know, you just got to put yourself out there and that could potentially open you up to a whole new audience as well. So don't ever be afraid to, you know, to, to put yourself out there, I think is probably the key here. Don't be scared. Um, and, you know, we're our worst, we're our own worst critiques. And um, I think we can worry a little bit too much about what other people think. So, you know, be you, no one else can be you. And if you love something, go with it, because I'm sure there is going to be other people out there that will love it as well. Alrighty. So now I'm having a look at this little face. I do want to fix the lighting here just a bit more, so I'm going to bring it this way just a tad. Okay, and then I'm ready to take a photo, I think. What I'm also looking at here is I'll just actually quickly point it out before I pick up my camera, is see how the wrap is sort of a bit straighter there on the sides? If you can, try to follow the lines of the bowl by bringing it down and around a little more around the outside of the baby. And then the lines will follow the prop What kind of light are you using? Uh, this is a continuous LED daylight balanced light. All right. So I've just used that wool to kind of eliminate and cover any areas that um, sort of are giving me any dark shadows. And I still want to um, obviously be able to see the um, the bowl underneath. I need a camera.
All right. So I would never stand on anything above a baby. That's obviously going to be, you know, a risk that I don't want to take. Uh, and that's the thing. We, prevention is always better than cure, like with anything, especially with what's happening in the world, which is why we need to stay indoors. Um, we want to prevent the further spread of something like this so we can get back to normal, you know, a little faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll need to use the back of your camera to take the photo. That's all right. So we'll be able to see exactly what you're seeing through that. Excellent. So people might feel a little seasick. <laughs> so bring it up on the screen so everyone can see what you're seeing. Okay, so I've just toned that exposure down. I'm just going to wipe the back of my LCD screen so I can see. The glare off the light is, is a bit bright there. Alrighty, so now when I'm having a look at my camera angle, at the moment I'm all the way out at 25 mil. Sorry about that um, as I move it. But this is where I do want to come in, you know, and get that focal length absolutely right. Obviously I can bring it up higher so I can zoom in a little further. But when I'm looking at camera angles, I want to make sure that I can see the baby's face. Now I don't necessarily need to shoot square on to my backdrop either, but I do need to be careful that I'm not blocking any light coming through. So I'm just going to turn ever so slightly here to the side, move my focal point. Okay, so I'm having a look at my exposure there and I am a third of a stop underexposed. I'm having a look at my composition in terms of where she's placed within the frame and being a round prop I want to have her as centered as I possibly can. So I can't quite see my histogram as I'm taking this shot, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, perfect. So let me just bring it up to the centre there and we'll have a little look at this. All right, so having a look at that histogram, that looks pretty good to me. Um, I could bring my exposure up just a bit to make sure that I've got those skin tones exactly where I want them because I can see the information is kind of sitting down towards those mid-tones. Um, and what I'm going to do is just slightly rotate her a bit more. I might even bring her face around just a tad more to get that, that lighting just right there. Now you can see I haven't got her, I'm not happy, I don't have her straight up in the frame. I've got her slightly off to the side, but I do have the prop in the middle there and I'm kind of looking at my composition here going, okay, can I see everything? I can probably see more flowers on this side than I can on this side, so I can pull those out just a bit. Now that looks a bit better. <laughs> Get this orange lead out of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. Okay. So what I do with my seven, my twenty-four to seventy is I get the, I get my camera exactly where I need it to be, and then I zoom in and out to get that, that prop and that baby exactly where I want them positioned in my frame. I want to see all of her beautiful face. I don't want to see the top of her head if I come over too much. So I'm just going to come back here a little bit. In terms of my angle, her head is higher than her feet, so her face is going to be closest to the camera. Move that focal point. She's on that slight angle, so her little head is off to the top left-hand side. And this is the trick bit. The preview doesn't come up on the camera. It's on the um, computer. So we can go through the images. OK, um, yeah, but you can see exactly what I'm looking at there. Now, if I was not overly impressed with those darker sort of shadows over here onto the side, I'll bring in the reflector. This is where the trolley works brilliantly at bouncing some of this light in towards these darker, darker shadows on this side. 
on the floor. It's changed my exposure a little bit, which is good because it's added more light. I've just brought it back down to the middle of my meter. And that looks pretty good in terms of exposure. Alrighty, so when I'm looking for different camera angles and things like that, um, when I'm shooting from above, actually, while well, I've got my camera, you know, if I shoot from down low, then obviously that looks kind of cute, but her feet are going to be closest to the camera there, even if I'm focusing on her face and I'm shooting at 2.8 wide open, that's obviously going to be um, out of focus, the feet area. And I'm going to make that bottom half of her body appear a lot larger. If I stand around here, I run the risk then of obviously blocking my light. You can see the difference there of that light coming through. Um, now, if I want to look for different camera angles, I always want to come in and get a beautiful close up. But when I look for the different camera angles, I also want to look at how I can differently, you know, sort of pose hands and, and things like that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take the little headband off. And this is where I would fill the frame. Can't do that, Kelly. <laughs> Went to look through my viewfinder. Um, I would fill the frame and come in and fill it with her little face. Get that focal point exactly where I want it. And get a nice close up there. And this is where you would also want to get a beautiful close up with those little hands up around the face. So you can see where they're kind of cutting through the edge of the frame there. That's not really where you would want them positioned for a shot like this. So that's where I would either have them in there or I would position them up nice and high, get them placed, you know, gently around that face. See if we can get that to stay there for a second. Sweet, we need a little bit of blue tack, Garrett. <laughs> what gas tack? But yeah, so we don't want to cut through the bottom of the frame, but we do want to include them in those beautiful close-ups. Alrighty. Um, the next kind of setup that I kind of want to look at here is potentially doing a beautiful backlit shot. So I am going to move some of these sort of little flowers out of the background here. I'm going to shoot towards the image and I'll show you what I'm going to look for. But this is where I could introduce a little hat and I don't need to have the flowers in something like this because it's a different shot, different angle. I do need background though. So this is where I can get rid of these to create that variety for my gallery. I need one of those blowers, yeah. Obviously blowing on the ground with a baby there is not hygienic. But just for the sake of doing a live and getting through this, Garrett can sweep it while we're putting a hat on to create the variety. Okay, so I'm going to be backlighting this. So the way that I position the hat is obviously going to, um, you know, come into the, um, the overall composition of the shot. So if I tie the bow over here, but I'm shooting it from here, I'm not really going to see it. So I want to tie the bow here so it becomes a bit of a feature of the actual setup. I think I've got wool all over my face. And then I also, when I'm backlighting, want to slightly turn the head towards the camera so we can see that beautiful face. And yes, I did just call my silicon baby beautiful. <laughs> How are we going? We got some questions. Very, very we got a long one there, my goodness. Baby 
So what would be my preferred wrapping style? Do you know, I would start with a full body wrap um, and, and that's in my wrapping tutorials purely because with a colicky baby um, and, and you know, that baby, I mean, if, if mum has said it has colic, then, you know, obviously, you know, doing a little bit of research and finding out a little bit more about colicky babies, but you want to make them feel secure. You don't want to be moving them around a lot. You probably want to have them a little bit more upright as opposed to flat on their back. So making sure that you can position them like that. But try to get as much information as you possibly can. I did a five week old baby recently and it slept the entire time. Um, it was a little fussy to start with, but once it went to sleep, I just basically kept it nice and sort of um, calm and I didn't move it too much to get the variety that I was looking for and that's what it's all about trying to get as much variety as you possibly can. I used a bowl like this recently and I shared the images um, I shared the images the other day actually in a comment but I can post them back in here and it's eight different photos from one prop actually it was six six different photos from one prop and not really moving the baby too much. It's just about a different arm and hand placement, different camera angles, close up, pull back, all of that variety that you can get. So yeah, make sure that you can um, um, understand obviously as much as you possibly can from the parents about that particular baby in terms of what it, you prefer, how it prefers to lie, sleep, things like that. But I do have a blog post on newbornposing.com and it's about newborn behavior. So you can learn a little bit more from that too. What am I doing? I'm gonna do the backlit shot. <laughs> Get it together, Kelly. Is the light source coming from the lower end of the bowl or from the side? Then you know how you're shooting it, I suppose, isn't it? So yeah, well the light here is completely kind of side on to um, to the prop. So I'm currently but the baby's head is on a 45 degree angle towards that light source. So it's how you position and pose the baby. So right now, the light that's spilling across is on a 90 degree angle towards the baby um, and towards the prop. So it's pretty much coming in straight on um, from the side of the baby. But the baby's head, which is what I'm mostly concerned about, is on a 45 degree angle. So at the moment, if I'm the baby inside the prop and the light's coming in, it's currently on a 90 degree angle towards me. But then when I, how I position the baby's face and I turn and angle the baby's face at a 45 degree angle so that light can fall from a top, across the top of the forehead down across the face, that's gonna give me the desired results that I'm looking for. And what I always look for is that little shadow on the nose and how it moves. If the light is directly underneath the nose, the shadow, sorry, underneath the nose, the light's obviously coming in from the top. If the light is coming in from a, a 90 degree angle, the light is going to be somewhat on a, um, you know, uh, the shadow is gonna be somewhat straight across the face there. But as that light gets higher and it comes down across the face, the shadow is going to come down on a little angle and that's what I'm always looking for when it comes for that direction of the light. So whilst the baby and the prop are at a 90 degree angle right now, what I'm looking for is that 45 degree angle of light with the way that I position and pose the head. So understanding that is gonna give you the best results that you can possibly achieve when photographing babies. Lovely, um, what camera do you use? Uh, this one here is the Canon, is this the Mark IV? Uh, no, the this is the 5DS. So um, when I had my 5D Mark III, I needed to upgrade and the, the next image released, I mean, sorry, the next camera released was the 5DS and the 5DSR. So I've had my 5DS now for quite a while. I did get the 5D Mark IV, but we tend to use that for sort of more um, videoing and things like that. All right, let's get this baby's head into position. So like I said, when I'm going for a backlit shot, I want that light to come in and fall across the baby, but I do want the baby's face to come towards the camera. Get those hands exactly where we want. So I just need to adjust the support here underneath the baby's head. So it stays up. So the camera angle that I'm kind of looking for here is to make sure that 
the light is coming across the baby's face and I'm going to have this curve from the top of the head to the bottom in the side of my frame. So if we think about a rectangular frame, I want the curve of the baby to kind of, you know, sit just inside that, that sort of um, right hand side of the frame and the body to lead you into any negative space. This is where I can sort of have those little legs turned a little bit more towards that light as I'm watching these shadows here fall from the baby's nose. Try to get that little hand positioned right there. No. <laughs> you really want to tape that baby, don't yeah. you, Garrett? Okay. So when I'm looking for the right camera angle here, um, let me just kind of zoom in. So right now, you can see a whole lot, I'll try and keep it as still as I can. You can see a whole lot of shadow um, and the area there that you don't necessarily need to see. So I'm too low and I'm too far to the left. This is where I need to move around to the right and come up a little higher. I am at 70 mil focal length. So I'm gonna have, you know, as less distortion as I possibly can when shooting this. And you can see my background over there, that beautiful light coming in, coming up a little higher. And if you want, you could come in closer and crop it in, but you do want to be careful that you're not going to, obviously, let's get that focal point exactly where we want it. Crop through any areas that lead you out of the frame. So I'm just going to rotate my camera now to the right to lift the baby's head higher in the frame. Did you see that? And then get that angle exactly where I want. I'm also looking at the eye on the other side there. So if I come down too low, I'm going to miss half of that eye. If I come down even lower, you know, this is where I'm starting to see more background and less baby. So you've got to think about the direction of where you pose and position that baby's head. So coming up a little higher. I'm now going to see more of the baby's face and I'm going to get that beautiful backlit shot. There we go. Can you just let everyone know that sound will cut out for just a second? Okay, so Garrett's just going to do a quick battery change um, with the mic pack there. So. All right, we're back. Hi, we've got someone from the Philippines has just tuned in. Hi, welcome. Okay, another thing I just want to show you very quickly when we are using reflectors and things like that. When you are shooting backlit, you can see my exposure here on my camera. Now, if we have a little look right now, if I have a look at that histogram, if the information, and I'll bring my exposure down, if that information is starting to hit the other end of my histogram, I'm underexposed, I'm going to lose detail in the blacks, but I can also see that those creamy skin tones are definitely not where I want them to be. They're down in towards those sort of mid-tone shadow areas, those blacks. So what I want to do is bring up that exposure, watching my histogram move. Now I'm starting to put the skin tones exactly where I want them. I'm not going to overexpose the image because I can see I've still got lots of room between those highlights and the end of my histogram. But that's exactly what I'm looking for in terms of exposure. But let's just say I don't want my shadows to be that great. If I bring in a reflector, and I'm just going to use a white towel. I'll put this up here so it doesn't get in the way. And I'm just going to bring that across my knees. You can already start to see how it's filled those shadows on the baby's face. So let's get that camera angle right. And we'll take a shot. Now that's two thirds of a stop overexposed. I'm looking at that histogram. It looks pretty good. Oh, I'm shooting at 2.8, my ISO is at 640, 
And what I'm doing is I'm not looking at my shutter speed, but I'm moving and adjusting my meter to bring my exposure up to where I want it to be. Um, that's when, that's exactly that I, everything that I teach and getting it right in camera when it comes to exposure. So we're gonna flick through some of these photos in a minute, but yeah, what I wanna show you just real quick, if you can switch back to this top, uh, probably it's gonna be this one, maybe come in a little closer. Oh, great. And we can show the difference between using a reflector and... There, and I'll start to bring those shots up. So people have got both your um, angles there. Okay, so using something like this is going to fill those shadows on the side of the face. Um, and then obviously uh, taking it away, it's, it's going to increase those shadows. So what we want to do is create shadow when we're backlighting to give the depth and dimension, but we don't want it to, um, you know, to fill them too much. So what I suggest is if you're using a reflector, kind of bring it in, have a look at how much it's filling that, that area, and then just start to bring that reflector back further away. So it's still filling, but it's softer um, in terms of how your camera is going to obviously capture that information. But yeah, I think we're pretty much done here. With a prop like this, shooting on it with a baby on its back, then you know you could start to bring the little hands up behind the head. You could bring one of the legs out. You could have a little bit of fun with that and get a lots of variety. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, we've talked a little bit about light placement. We've talked about composition. We've talked about styling, what to look for. We've talked uh, um, about a little bit about exposure and focal length as well. So someone said there, so you don't want the white and the histogram to hit either end. Well, it's, so the information in your histogram is what your camera is capturing. So you've got your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. If the information is hitting the highlights end, you've lost all detail in your highlights. There is no information there whatsoever. It won't even print anything when you go to print that photograph if there's nothing there. Um, they're called hotspots and, and overexposures. So then if the information to the left in your shadows is hitting the end of your histogram in your blacks, then you're going to lose all detail in your blacks. And what that's going to do is print black. That's it. There's no detail there in your shadows. So you do want to keep that information exactly where you want it. But understanding where, um, when you are shooting different tones, where they should sit in your histogram is also really important, um, which, is, which is something that I, I also teach. So I know for, for a fact shooting this sort of tone, it's not 50% grey. This is probably going to be, this tone here is probably going to be in the middle of my histogram, maybe slightly darker um, being the tone that it is. My bowl is going to be around the same sort of tones. And then my skin tones should be somewhere halfway between you know, the, the, um, the mid-tones and those whites to get that exposure just right. Okay. So yeah, Garrett's going to flick through some of these. Um, shooting live view is always fun. <laughs> getting the, getting all the, it all right. All the technical issues in the world, but um, we get there eventually, don't we? Okay, yeah. I'm going to keep you on the screen and... Okay, will... so looking, looking at that one from above, um, a few things when you're shooting from above, try to get that baby in the center of the prop, try to get that, the bowl, something, if you're shooting a round object, you know, centered um, and create, you know, sort of like a, a shape with the baby that's gonna flow with the same sort of um, framing of that bowl. But when you get it right in camera, in terms of your crop and your composition, you don't really have to do too much to it later on in post-production. Um, don't have to crop it, which means removing, obviously, information if you, if you're worried um, about doing that and so forth. And then you can see that information in the histogram. I've got lots of detail in the skin tones. The skin tones are sitting up nice and high where I want them to be. And I can't even see, like I'm literally about two and a half meters away from the laptop here. So I'm squinting to see the histogram. Um, but yeah, I've got lots of details in my shadows there as well. And then I did take a shot with um, a reflector to fill some of those shadows too. So yeah. close-up shot of that face obviously when you come in again try not to cut anything off um, you know in terms of fingers and, and wrists and things like that the bottoms of the elbow is fine 
the, uh, the top of the head is fine as long as you're not cutting in too close that you are starting to constrain, obviously. Macro shots are beautiful when you can get them um, in terms of close-ups, but rules in terms of those close-ups, make sure the nose doesn't cut the cheek line and um, you, know, you can see all those beautiful features. And use the light. Um, whether you're using short lighting, broad lighting, split lighting, um, use different types of lighting techniques to create variety in terms of your close-ups as well. And then moving on to the backlight. Yeah, so that's without a reflector. So we can see there's, um, you know, we've got lots of detail in our highlights. I think I did bring up my exposure in the next shot. Or, oh, yep, there we go. Um, and then is that the last one there? So that's the last one with a reflector. So I've really filled, um, filled those shadows there. But it's entirely up to you as to how sort of dark you want those shadows to be, how moody you want them to be, um, to create the different look. When I create beautiful dark moody images like this, as long as I've got detail in those you know, shadows and highlights, uh, converting those to black and whites and making them really rich in terms of depth, um, you know, that's something I absolutely love doing. But you can see there as well with that composition, you know, I have cut through the prop um, and the bottom right hand side, but the baby is obviously still within inside the edge of the frame, the distance between the baby's head and the edge of the frame, and then the wrap down near the elbow on the bottom of the frame is nice and even in terms of balance and the head starts at that top intersecting line in terms of your rule of thirds, and then the body tends to lead you through to that negative space. So in terms of composition, uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. So yeah, always remember to, and I mean, again, someone with the angry face, come on, if that's an accident, remove it. That's not fair, I'm giving away a lot of free content here, and <laughs> if you're not interested, move along. <laughs> As I've said previously. But yeah, um, I do love sharing all of this with you guys. I want you to use this time to get back into your studios, to shoot, stop sitting behind the computer and reading everything about the virus and what everyone else is going through. Start being proactive in your business. Get in there, do the work. Um, like I said, set yourself some structured business hours around homeschooling your kids if that's what you're doing. But get into your, into your studio and, and start practicing, start working with different props, different elements, different textures. Create some photographs, go back, re-edit old photographs, be sharing, someone asked previously about you know, sharing stuff online right now. This is what you need to be doing. You need to be sharing whatever you possibly can on your social media pages every single day to stay active. Facebook right now has more active users than it's ever had before because obviously people have nothing better to do with their time and they're trying to stay up to date with all of the, the live broadcasts from you know um, governments, from um, health um, advisors, things like that. So you need to be active. The algorithms in Facebook, if you are not active, will think that you are no longer relevant to your followers. So start working on a schedule, start posting every day on your Facebook and Instagram pages and get into your studio. Give yourself a kick up the bum and, and get back to work because you can work from home. Uh, even if you do work from home. Do you know what? Someone mentioned before that I've got makeup on today. The best way for me to stay active is to get up, have a shower, get out of my pajamas and put a face on and start working on what I want to achieve that day and get out there and get, get, get into it because you might not think that I'm struggling, but I am. I mentioned the other day we had to let a staff member go absolutely heartbreaking but we are all going to suffer financially from this you know our studio is not a rental we actually have a mortgage on it yes the government are putting in places things for us to be able to um, you know lighten the the blow I suppose but we are all being very very careful financially right now and we are all scared uh, you're not alone but what I'm choosing to do is get back into my studio and keep active keep focused keep productive and, and keep creating content um, so that when we do come out of this, we can hit the ground running and we can start working and our customers are going to be so much happier um, with us. So always try to 
to, to be positive and stay focused. I want you guys to, to look after yourselves. You know, get out and do some exercise in your backyard if you can. Um, if you don't have a backyard, if you've got a set of stairs, run up and down your stairs 10 times every morning to get that blood pumping, get you guys um, active, focused and energized. It's gonna help you um, definitely in the long run. I know after yesterday's backdrop painting, I, that was a, a very big warning for me to start getting active again. So I got on my treadmill this morning and I did 20 minutes, which is a start. And then I plan to kind of do an extra couple of minutes every day to get back up to where I should be with my fitness levels. I know it's gonna be better for my mind and it's gonna be better for my health in the long run. So yeah, I want you guys to um, come back and join me tomorrow. I'm gonna to edit some of these photos and some more. I'm gonna shoot some digitals now with this, without a baby. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to show you how I composite a baby into them. So if you've got some digitals, it's gonna help with that in terms of the editing process. And I'll share my screen so you can see everything that I'm doing. It's gonna be the same time tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So I'll look forward to seeing you then. And if you've got any um, questions in the meantime, you know, write them down so you can come back tomorrow and, and ask them during the live. But we're here for you guys. Let's support each other. Let's look after each other. See you. Bye.